So the word defibrillator for today, we'll be trusting God for a word from within a word. Now, I did ask and I did receive, so let's see what God is going to say to us. Now, we've heard these scriptures before, maybe, and we've heard them in a certain context, but for today, what is God trying to tell us through the scripture? So we're looking at Matthew 7 and verse 21. Now, there is a therefore in verse 20. Uh, let's just go a little bit back. Okay, let's go start at verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you dressed as sheep, but inside they are devouring wolves. You will fully recognize them by their fruits. Do people pick grapes from thorns or figs from thistles? Even so, every healthy sound tree bears good fruit, worthy of admiration. But the sickly, decaying, worthless trees bears bad, worthless fruit. So this is like an analogy saying, well, you, if you want to bear good fruit, you need to be worthy of admiration. When people will look upon you and say, oh my gosh, God is good. Now sometimes people will dress like that, but inside they're not. A good, healthy tree cannot bear bad, worthless fruit. Nor can a bad, diseased tree bear excellent fruit worthy of admiration. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Therefore, you will fully know them by their fruits. Well, for you and I, we are going to be known by our fruits. Not everyone who says to me, and this is the verse for today, Matthew 7.21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Wow. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And driven out demons in your name, and done by many done many mighty works in your name, and then I, I will say to them, openly, publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. Now that's a little bit of a better context for me, because in the past it's like, oh my gosh, what does it take to know the Lord? Do I really know him? And you go into this panic. Am I spending enough time with him? Am I praying enough? Am I, am I repenting enough? But there it says, says to us, if you know me, your fruit will be that you're listening to my commands and walking in them. It says in verse 23, and then I will say to them openly, publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. Who? You who acted wickedly disregarding my commands. So everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible, prudent, practical, wise man who built his house on the rock. So that's a very, very good distinction between the two. So be careful of those who kind of act like Jesus and kind of try to look like Jesus, but are not following his commands. They might say the, the same, the, the right things. They might prophesy because the gifts come without repentance. So you can have a really, really a, a evil hearted person that can seem to be a, a prophet of God. But what are, the, what are the fruits of their lives? How do they treat their loved ones? How do they, how do they treat somebody behind the till when they're buying groceries? How do they treat you? one thing to be in front of the masses and you can act so fantastically but you and i know deep down in your heart you know whether you are following god's commands or not it just says there if you act wickedly disregarding my commands it's not going to happen i'm going to say i don't know you because if i knew you and you knew me you would be following my commands you would be doing the will of my father not everyone who says to me, Lord, 
Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So Jesus is talking about the Father. So what is it the Father have you do today in your life? What is his will for us today? And is it in line with the word of God? Is it in line with Jesus Christ? Because it is the will of the Father to say, hey, listen to my son. He has given you words and you need to obey them. Because you know what? You're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven if you're not obeying the Father. There are certain conditions that need to be in place in order for things to work. One of those conditions are, well, if you want full access to the kingdom of heaven, you need to give your life to Christ. You need to believe it in your heart that he is the Son of God, died on the cross for your sins, and that unto you is going to be, yeah, that's going to be righteousness. But for salvation, you need to confess it with your mouth. You really, really need to do And then you have full access to the kingdom of heaven. You see, that is knowing God. Knowing his word and what it means in our lives. And obeying it and walking in it. That people will look upon you and you would be worthy of admiration because you're absolute example of how you live your life. And the way you treat others is a reflection of Jesus and revealing the love of the Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for another, another shot of this, Father. Help us this day, Holy Spirit. Lead us in the word. Speak to our hearts. Deliver us from anything that is stopping us from walking in the will of the Father. As it says, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, Father, as we have these discussions, and you've had them too about us, you, you called us by name. What is it that you have us do today? And boy, how exciting it is, Father, because you ignite us, you give us the, the power and the energy that we need to serve you and your agenda. So may we find that one person today, Father, that we can just touch with maybe a smile, and Father, it is a day to smile. And I thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen.